Non-photorealistic art styles have gained a lot of traction over the last decade. The success of Genshin Impact has pushed more mobile games to embrace the 3D anime aesthetic, while JRPGs like Persona and the Tales series have slowly gotten closer to mimicking the hand-drawn style over the years. The most notable game developer for innovating techniques is Arc System Works, the one behind Dragon Ball Fighters, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, and Guilty Gear. At first glance, these games look hand-drawn, but they are in fact 3D, using unique means that stray away from the conventional modeling and animation practices. Every now and again, I dabble in learning this style myself. I've extracted models and reverse engineered them to get a better understanding for their construction, while also following a few other creators who have been developing their own techniques. In the wake of Unity filling its bed with its own crap, a lot of developers like myself have felt compelled to move away from the engine and find alternatives. As a result, my most recent project is currently on the back burner. This left me with a choice. Do I boot up a new engine and start building from scratch? Or do I use my time to improve my skills in other areas that I've been meaning to do for some time? Which brings me to the purpose of this video series. The primary goal is to practice and improve my NPR skills while showing the process. Starting from drawing a reference to constructing a base model, through to finally texturing and beautifying it. This video in particular is where I'll be creating the reference, so first a few disclaimers. Number 1. By no stretch of the imagination am I a good artist, nor do I claim to be one. My process of drawing is slow and clunky, but it is important to be able to do this, so I struggle my way through it. I believe it is worthwhile for anybody who wishes to model humanoids to learn the basics of anatomy and draw references like this, as it makes the modeling process far easier. Number 2. I drew this entire reference with a mouse, and a broken one at that. At times it draws dotted lines or double clicks tools causing a lot of headaches. If you are interested in doing this, don't be me, invest in a drawing pad. I do have a super cheap one, but for some reason it has a weird glitch, probably because it's cheap, so I'm not using it, so look up some reviews and find yourself a decent one. Number 3. I will be skipping the concepting phase since this is a character I've had in mind for a while. I would suggest getting a bunch of ideas down on paper first, think who your character is, their personality, profession, combat style etc, and incorporate that into their design. Collect a lot of reference images as inspiration, and do some brief sketches before you begin. And finally, number 4. This isn't necessarily a tutorial. However, I will explain how I do things and hopefully it will help guide a few people in the right direction. I'm open to hear suggestions from more experienced artists, but my primary goal here is to create a reference to follow when modelling, not to make a piece of art. With all that said, let's get into this train wreck of a video. The program I'm using is GIMP. It's a free alternative to Photoshop. It's not amazing and has a few quirks, but considering it's free, it is good for what it is. First, I needed to get the scale correct, so I drew a rough shape of a head and spent some time laying out some guides. You can do this by grabbing the edge of the canvas window and dragging in. There are a lot of references out there to help you lay this out, but it also depends on what style you're trying to achieve. On my second monitor, I'm using a program known as PureRef, which allows you to create a collage of images and scale them to how you desire. I try to gather as many reference images as I can. For the purpose of this, I have real life pictures as well as anime or semi-realistic drawings. To avoid upsetting YouTube, I won't show my initial reference board, but I'll show the later ones that are a little safer and less natural. Characters in NPR styles tend to have unrealistic and exaggerated proportions, so it is a case of working out what works best for my general style and specific character. For this reason, I don't religiously follow somebody else's guide, instead I use it as a means to keep the character within its own proportions. Once my guides are laid out, I make several attempts to draw the body in red. Most of these initial attempts were terrible, so I redrew them over and over. There are ways to use boxes, circles and ellipses to draw the body easily. I've tried this approach a few times and struggled to make it work, so my approach is hitting my head against the wall until I eventually get a decent starting point. Eventually I worked out the basic shape of the torso and slowly moved onto the legs. Often I will utilise the warp transform tool to shift rough lines to work out where exactly they should be, and then redraw them. Next is the arms. For this I used this reference image to get the general breakdown and apply it to my body scale. One thing I kept in mind was when the arm is at the side of the character, generally the centre of the hand would align with the bottom of the pelvis. Also note I'm drawing in a T-pose. This is what I prefer to do, but if you intend to use something like Rigify within Blender, it may be worth putting them slightly angled to save you adjusting them later. You'll notice I have a central guide and I'm only drawing half the body, that is so I can mirror it later. From here I spent a lot of time tweaking, cutting sections and shifting them and redrawing until it was as close as possible, ready for me to draw in more finalised lines. On a new layer, I then drew in black with the smooth stroke settings cranked up. This is hard with a mouse, so some of the curves aren't perfect, but close enough. 
At the hips of the shoulders, I have lines to get a better idea of the shape. I removed these with the eraser and also used it to cut into certain lines so they make them more gradual. Something you can do much easier on a drawing pad. This isn't the final shape. I do readjust it a lot later by redoing the hands and narrowing the thigh gap, but technically I could use it already and create a profile view ready for my 3D model. However, I did want to draw the full character here, so I moved on to adding skin color. At the top left, I created a palette with a few different skin tones, consisting of a light and dark color. I then used the fuzzy select tool within my outline, drew the selection a few pixels and filled it on a new layer. I try to keep all shading on separate layers so that I can adjust the tones individually later if I feel they're not quite right. As for applying shading, I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. I do what looks good and makes sense based on the light source, but really, applying shading doesn't really matter. I just do it because it makes it look nicer. I also adjusted the black lines to be a dark brown that complements the skin tone. I'll replicate this on the 3D model later as well. Now that my front view is done, I can lay out some guides at key points by getting the scale correct for the side view. I placed one of the references I was using on the canvas to help guide me with the general shape. It was much more slender than my characters, so I needed to keep that in mind. Once again, I started with a rough outline, utilizing the warp tool and redrawing a few times until I had finalized the outline. I also created a back view afterwards by duplicating the front view and making a few adjustments. This isn't necessary, but it can help with laying out some typology for areas like the scapula. And that is generally it for the body. You can probably take this and start modeling already, but I want to get a general idea for a fully fledged character. So next, it's onto the face. I upscaled the head and shoulders from my body drawing to use as a starting point. I tend to model the head and body separately, so creating a reference for each is how I like to approach it. This is my pure ref board for the face. I spent some time collecting a bunch of images that align with the idea I have in mind. The plan here is to not copy them, but to use them as inspiration for what I am trying to create. A lot of images I went with are semi-realistic opposed to straight up anime. I tend to like to give my characters lips as well, which is more akin to the Jose anime and manga styles opposed to shonen. From here, I proceed to draw an ugly face in red and start again in blue, resulting in a grumpy looking goblin. Nice. With a similar approach to before, I constantly read draw and shape the lines until I am happy to begin my more finalized lines. Apply some color and get to drawing the eye, starting with the lashes first to get the general shape, cutting away using the eraser. Then on new layers, draw the outline of the iris and pupil. Every color I add is on a separate layer and I use layer groups to organize everything appropriately. I ended up using these offset circles of color, a lighter shade at the bottom to a darker shade at the top. Then along the bottom edge, I added a white and set the layer mode to soft light, which affects the colors underneath within the group. I did the same with the top, but with black instead, and set it to dark light mode. I also applied a gradient to the lashes by using a layer set to overlay mode, and colorizing the black outline to a ready brown. And the final touch, two blurred spots of white to represent the light reflecting on the eye, which surprisingly adds a lot of life to it. Next was the eyelid and the eyebrow, which took me about a thousand attempts because drawing curves at certain angles with a mouse is awful. GIMP does have an option to rotate the canvas, but it lags when working with a lot of layers unfortunately. So I endured the pain and filled it with an ugly yellow for now. I mirrored the eye and adjusted the tone as I wanted this edgy heterochromia look and then moved on to the lips. Breaking each feature down into shapes works best for me, so I suggest collecting references and breakdown images for each aspect. Lips can be broken down into a few circles and triangles. The main feature is how the center of the lip sits over the bottom. My personal approach is to draw the shape line that represents that and then fill the lips out in a block color on a new layer underneath. Lastly, I apply a blur to flare them out before applying a few light spots on top. As for the nose, the profile view would be more important for this, so all I do is create a diamond shape of a darker tone, mark some nostrils, and apply a little white shine on the nose tip. Ears can be a weird one, but the way I draw them is based on this model by Yuli on Twitter. They make fantastic models, so I suggest if you're on the platform to give them a follow. I also added some blush to the cheeks by painting a block colour and blurring it, before lowering the lace transparency until it was blended just right. Now, I'll admit the face now looks awful. The nostrils, head and jaw shape are all bad. As for our eyes, they look crossed and are far too big. So here's where I got to work to fixing these problematic areas, referring back to my references. Now is a good time to mention another good Twitter user that is a good source for 3D anime characters, at Ruki Kuri. I believe they also sell courses on learning how to create similar models, so something to consider. The beauty of separating everything into layers is being able to adjust individual aspects later without too many headaches. For example, shifting the iris over, shrinking the eyes and 
changing their position helped a lot. I also adjusted the jawline to a gradual curve. Face shape is really dependent on your character. If you compare Catalina to Yule from Grand Blue for example, there is a significant difference in their look, created by a subtle change in their face shape. With this change, I also had to adjust the positioning of the nose and mouth to make it more visually pleasing. The colours of the lips and blush went from pink to a reddy orange and added a few more shine spots to the cheeks. Finally, I rotated the eyes a little. I was trying to achieve a kinder look and I found the flatter angle was more suited to that whereas a steeper look is what I'd go for if I was going for more of a femme fatale. Next was the nightmare that is hair. Once again, I sketched it out multiple times. The goal here is to work out where the hair is flowing from. I find breaking it down into strands is the easiest way for me, and every now and again, adding in a bit of chaos, where the strands flow in the opposite direction. My first attempt had a flattened fringe that I struggled to get to look right. Although it looked okay, I was unhappy with it, so I started again. While drawing this, I'm keeping in mind how it will be broken down into sections when creating it in 3D. These strands that come from behind the ear and rest on the chest for example will be reproduced with curves in Blender. Underneath I had to draw a bald cap that is visible where the hair parts. This will be how I transition the face mesh into the hair. Once I had found a shape and coloured it, I applied a transparency mask with a radial gradient centred on the face. This allows the darker lines of the eyebrows to show through the hair strands, which is a common technique found in both drawing and games, like here in Honkai Star Rail. To finalise it, I added some dark shading at the tips of the hair and created this light wavy line to give the impression of the silky gloss of the hair. Now my portrait view is done, I could set up the guise for my profile view. Same technique again, drawing multiple sketches in different colours, warping the lines until I'm happy with the shape, looking at multiple references as I went. A few things to remember is the eyebrow will be further forward than the eye and the jawline runs around into the earlobe. It's actually pretty hard to get all these elements to line up exactly with the front, especially when it comes to the hair. As I model this later, I'll probably change how some of this looks, but as a general guide, this is good enough. There isn't really much else to say, so the next step is to scale the head and put it onto the body, and move on to clothing. As I had the idea for the character in my head, I went and collected a lot of reference images first for the clothing. This character is part of an order of Vestals who go out and perform exorcisms and slay fiends that are terrorising the world, so obviously I collected a lot other pictures of nuns and other images of clothing that could work. The character will also be wielding a rapier, so I got a few images of the fencer archetype to see if I could incorporate some of their typical designs in her outfit. Since I already had the base body done, it was just a case of drawing the clothing layers over the top. I started with the most basic of black gowns, with some white stockings underneath. I quite like these roguish loose sleeves tied with a ribbon on the upper arm, so experimented with the idea. As previously mentioned, concepting before drawing a reference is probably a better idea, but I'm kind of doing both at the same time here. I also experimented with this undershirt and was planning to give us some kind of Victorian cravat, but I felt it was moving away from the original idea a little too much. The first gown idea also had this white underskirt that was visible for two slits at the side. I ended up stripping back a lot of these features to try and make the outfit a bit more practical for adventuring, placing the ribbons on her arms with buckled belts and adding some to her waist as well, so she had something to hang her sword from. I also gave her tall lace boots and some leather gloves, and this was the final look it came up with. Transfer the clothing over to the side and back view, pretty much using the same process. The hair on the back view isn't exactly finished, but I'm fine with not spending much more time on it. I'm not entirely happy with the side view either, however when it comes to clothing I generally use the 3D model I've created as a guide and make some major adjustments to make it look good from all angles. I hope seeing how I approach this will help a few people or inspire them to at least give it a go. I'm not really good at drawing and I only really do this to make my 3D models better, so any drawing tips, insights are welcome in the comments down below. Oh, and while you're at it, leave a like there too. Next time I'll be using this base body reference to create a model in Blender, so if you're interested in seeing how I can truck 3D models, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. And if you want to do none of that, would you kindly bugger off? Maybe.